be hearing from. I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Lundy Lewis, who can tell us a little bit about himself and then go right into presentation. Dr. Lewis. I sit here? Whatever's most comfortable. Okay, I'll get up. Uh, hi, I'm Lundy Lewis, and I'm very happy uh, to be here. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, we'll stay this distance from the mic. What I do is this. Uh, my background is artificial intelligence, um, which is a culmination of my uh, education and training in math and computer science and philosophy. I like to say my PhD is in philosophy. I'm so proud of that. Uh, and <laughs> Uh, all that sort of, you put that together and you get artificial intelligence. I've been doing that since the 80s. It's not cool to say this, but I was doing AI before AI was cool. <laughs> That's true. And um, so about five years ago, I um, embarked upon this project uh, to do, um, to use AI and robotics for the social good. I, had an, I got an endowed chair at my university with a pot of money, and I had to do something with it, and that's what I came up with, uh, using social robots and AI uh, to contribute to the so social good in some way. So I brought with me four uh, robots, and um, I won't have time to go into detail about how do we use, how we use uh, all the robots. Actually, I only see three. Oh, here's one right here. Uh, this is one I put together just this afternoon. This is actually Alexa, which I think of as a disembodied robot. Uh, and Alexa put in the, uh, the head where the stuffing used to be of this throw toy, which used to belong to my dog. But, <laughs> but, but he, uh, he was, he was uh, pulling the uh, squeaker out of it, so I didn't want to throw it away. So, uh, let me just do this uh, for, a, for a second. I want to show you how the, ro the humanoid robot uh, sits up and says hello to people. And I do this with kids all the time, um, kids with autism or uh, 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 other disabilities. But it's fun, just so you can see it move. Hold on one second. opening move uh, when this robot begins interacting with children with autism. And of course, we, spec we hope that the child will say yes, but sometimes the child has to be nudged by a therapist. And uh, this other robot on the end is Paro, and we use that robot uh, uh, to help soothe and calm elderly people with dementia, for example. And so um, what I like to do is take these robots uh, into the real world, into real situations uh, that is out of the lab, and um, see what they can do, see what, uh, try to measure the good that they can do in some way um, in a scientific fashion, because you need uh, evidence-based um, data in order to you know, prove things and to get, pub get publications. So one of the most recent things I've done here at the uh, University of Ottawa this semester is to do a comparison of Gibson, whom you just heard, and the, uh, the robot to Gibson's left. And that's, uh, his name is Jibo. Let me see if I can get Jibo to do something for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 
fortunately, it doesn't last too long. <laughs> I don't know why he never faces us when he does the dance and uh, <laughs> And so uh, I've, I'm, I'm uh, doing three projects, actually four, uh, this semester at the University of Ottawa. And one was at the uh, Canada uh, Museum of Science, in which I just wanted to get some kind of a measure of the extent to which kids in general, including kids with autism, um, uh, would engage with Jibo uh, compared to the extent to which they would engage in Gibson. So we know that Gibson uh, is good with children, uh, but Gibson is very expensive, like today something like $10,000, whereas Jibo is uh, affordable. It's like $500. And so the results, I haven't uh, done a, a thorough data analysis yet. I have all the data. But eyeballing the data uh, looks like they're both in the same ball, ballpark with respect to engagement uh, with children. So that's good uh, because, again, Jibo is affordable. So uh, in the time I have left, I'll mention one more thing. And this is a, another project. Uh, and it's more like a writing up a proposal uh, for an extended project. And this proposal, the idea is something like this. Could we have a social robot uh, that could help uh, people with uh, intellectual and uh, uh, developmental disabilities to cope better as they do uh, jobs in the real world, especially jobs that uh, uh, people do in today's knowledge economy? Because we know the workplace is, uh, is changing. What's that expression? Times are uh, changing. Uh, and uh, our idea is to develop the AI uh, for uh, a social robot to assist uh, those kind of individuals. In fact, that's what this little thing is. This is just a prototype. Uh, Alexa, what time is it? The time is 5, 10 p.m. Alexa, just for fun. How far is it from uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, to Ottawa? Ottawa is 278 miles from Nashua. New Hampshire as the crow flies. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alexa, how many kilometers is 270 miles? 270 miles is 435 kilometers. If you're like me, uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know what it. Uh, what it uh, I can't measure in kilometers, and probably you can't measure in miles. So I just did that. So imagine something like that uh, with AI for a specific task. Uh, maybe Alexa would not be in a uh, a throw toy like this, but maybe a medallion, or maybe some headphones uh, to assist um, people on the IID spectrum as they work through tasks. Would it? Would it? Uh, equip them with uh, skills uh, to make them more employable. That's the idea. We don't know if it's a good idea or whether it will work, but it's an idea worth pursuing. So I believe then, I think my time's about up. Thank Perfect. you.